DNA. Every living thing has DNA, from plants to animals to bacteria, even to viruses which were once considered non-living. And most importantly, we humans have it. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and although every living thing has DNA, its varied compositions differentiate you from others. The interesting fact is that humans' DNA is 99% the same. Therefore, it is only 1% of DNA that makes you unique. Does this mean twins don't have exactly the same DNA? No, they don't, unless they're monozygotic or identical twins. So now the questions arise. Why every living thing has DNA? What is so important in it? And what does it do? DNA has a recipe for synthesizing proteins. DNA synthesizes RNA, or ribonucleic acid, by a process called transcription. It is further translated into proteins by a process termed as translation. The explanation of DNA conversion into RNA, and finally RNA into proteins, is called central dogma. DNA contains hereditary information that is passed on to you from your parents. If you and your father have the same colour of eyes, or your hair are as silky as your mother, it is because of DNA that you inherited from your parents. Even many diseases are passed on from generation to generation because of DNA. Where does DNA reside in your body? Your body is made up of billions and trillions of cells, and almost all cells have DNA in their nucleus. Can you tell us which cell may not contain DNA? Now let's talk about the structure of DNA. Think of DNA structure as a ladder whose rungs are made up of different bases and sides as sugar phosphate. Each composition of this nitrogenous base, pentose sugar and phosphate group, is called nucleotide. The nitrogenous bases are of four different types, adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. Adenine will always bind with thymine and cytosine with guanine. This type of bonding is hydrogen bonding. Phosphate and sugar are linked together to make backbone and complementary bases are attached on it. Due to the bond angle of the sugar phosphate molecules, the linkages will eventually form a double helix structure. There's a lot more to know about DNA, but that's all for now. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid and DNA is a molecule which is located inside the nucleus of the cell and its main job is to store and code the genetic information of the body. Now, For most of the life cycle of the cell, the DNA is located inside the nucleus of the cell like a coiled noodle. But during the time when the cell replicates, the DNA is arranged in the form of structures which are known as chromosomes. And these chromosomes help to keep the DNA stable during the time of the cell replication. Now most of you are familiar with the double helix model of the DNA. The double helix model demonstrates that DNA is basically a polymer. Now to understand the structure of DNA in a better way, you have to understand the definition of a polymer. So the polymer is basically a molecule which is consisting of many repeating units which are known as monomers. If you take the example of a simple polymer called as starch, in this case the repeated monomeric units are known as glucose. These glucose molecules are joined together by glycosidic bonds and they form the polymer which is known as starch. In a similar way, DNA is also a polymer and in this case, the monomeric units which form the polymer DNA are known as nucleotides. Now, this is the basic structure of a nucleotide. You can see that it consists of three important groups, the phosphate, the sugar, and the nitrogenous base. Now, if you want to study the details of the structure of nucleotides, you can refer to the video about the nucleic acids. The link to that video will be in the description below and also on the top of the video. But in a nutshell, you can conclude that the sugar present inside the nucleotide is called the deoxyribose, which is a 5-carbon sugar which belongs to the pentoses. The phosphate group consists of a phosphorus ion to which 4 oxygen atoms are attached. And then we have the important nitrogenous bases, which are organic molecules which contain nitrogen in the form of ringed structures. We have four different types of bases that can be present inside the molecule DNA. 
these are the adenine guanine cytosine and thymine now since we can have four different types of nitrogenous bases we can have four different types of nucleotides that are present inside the structure of a dna now as you can see these four nucleotides are arranged in two groups the first group is known as pyrimidines and these contain the nitrogenous base thymine and cytosine which are both single ring bases and the second group contains the nucleotides which are known as purines which have adenine and guanine as the nitrogenous base which are double ringed structures now in case of starch the structure is pretty simple which only consists of long linear chains of glucose or either branched chains which are joined together by glycosidic bonds this is the chemical structure of the starch and you can see the different types of glucose chains but in case of dna the four type of nucleotides join together in a very complex way to form the double helix structure now if you zoom into the structure of this double helix model of the dna you can clearly see that it basically consists of these two blue lines which are twisted around each other and it also consists of these orange lines in the center which connects these two blue lines together now to understand its structure in a better way if we just untwist the double helical model we will get something which is known as the step ladder model of the dna it is also has a similar structure and it consists of these blue vertical lines and these orange horizontal lines now these blue vertical lines basically represent the sugar phosphate backbone of the dna and the central lines which are orange in color represent the base pairs of the dna we will get to these terms in just a bit Now to understand the structure in more detail the next thing you have to understand is how two nucleotides are joined together basically we covered this topic in our previous video about nucleic acids so if you want to learn in more detail you can refer to that video the link to that video will be in the description below now the carbons present inside the deoxyribose sugar of the dna are numbered from 1 to 5 in the clockwise direction and you should remember there is numbering of the carbon atoms because it will help you to understand the concept of directionality of dna Now what happens is that the third carbon in every deoxyribose sugar forms a bond with the phosphate group of another nucleotide that is present below it and this bonding extends in both directions. Now if you zoom into this structure you can basically see that every phosphate is connected to two sugars one bond with the third carbon of the sugar above and one bond with the fifth carbon of the sugar below. And now again if we zoom out you can clearly see that due to the bond formation between the sugar and phosphates we create this sort of sugar phosphate backbone on one side and we have all the nitrogenous bases which project out of this sugar phosphate backbone on one side so what this basically represents is essentially a single strand of dna now if you go back to the step ladder model of the dna you can clearly understand how the different nucleotides in a single strand of dna are joined together to form the sugar phosphate backbone which was represented by these blue vertical lines and in the center we had these orange bars which connected these two lines which are essentially the base pairs from one side Now in the opposite side we have the other strand of the DNA which is quite similar to this original strand but has some key important differences for you to understand and to understand these key differences you have to understand the concept of directionality and complementary base pairing now what directionality essentially means is that it is the end to end chemical orientation of a single strand of nucleic acid In this example you are saying the single strand of a nucleic acid now the direction of the dna is expressed in two ways 5 prime end to 3 prime end or 3 prime end to 5 prime end now if you look closely at this structure you can basically see that it has a 5 prime end to which a phosphate group is attached and it also has a 3 prime end below to which a hydroxyl group is attached so if we come back to our dna ladder model we can see that the strand we made before runs in 5 prime to 3 prime direction now in a similar way if you look at the opposite strand you can basically note that there is one important key difference that it runs in completely opposite direction it has its 3 prime end in this direction and its 5 prime end in this direction so it is said to be running from 3 prime to 5 prime direction which makes the two strands of the dna anti parallel Now the next important thing for you to understand is the complementary base pairing which describes the manner in which the different nitrogenous bases of dna strands align with each other 
So it basically means that the base adenine pairs always with the base thymine and the base guanine always forms hydrogen bonds with the base cytosine. You can see this rule in action in the DNA stepladder model where you can see that the base A always pairs with the base T and the base C always pairs with the base G. These bases are essentially forming the hydrogen bonds in the center which holds these two strands of the DNA together. Now the complementary base pairing is very important in one of the most important aspects that it maintains a proper distance between the two strands of the DNA which is very very important for the stability of the two strands of the DNA. So now if you look at the double helical model of the DNA you can understand what these two helical lines mean and what the central spokes which are connecting these two lines are essentially made up of. So this was all about the basic structure and function of our DNA. I hope you